Hello and welcome to Faith Life Family. I'm Missy DeConti. Tonight I'm thrilled to say that my guest is Father Donald Calloway. He is a priest with the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. And if you're not already familiar with his story, I'll give it to you quickly in a nutshell. He converted to Catholicism, was a high school dropout, used to have hair all the way down to his waist. He was thrown in jail several times, was institutionalized twice, and was even thrown out of a foreign country. However, our Lord and Our Lady had great plans for him. He is now, thanks be to God, had a radical conversion and is a very devoted, very well-known and prominent Marian devoted priest. He um, has written many wonderful books. As a matter of fact, tonight he will be unveiling his brand new book, which has been called A Masterpiece by high-ranking officials in the Catholic Church. So um, without further ado, let's bring him on the show. Welcome, Father Calloway. Thank you so much for having me, Missy. It's an honor to be with you. Oh, and it is a pleasure to have you. And I have to say, I have to thank our mutual friend, Gigi, um, for she was so sweet that I was just merely wishing her a happy birthday. And apparently she's your biggest fan because she had to tell me all about Father Calloway's book. And then you said, yes, 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 I want to be on the show or please contact me. So it's yeah. because of that and because of her, because of our lady that we're blessed to have you with us this evening. No, that's great. Yeah, I'm super grateful for, for her and for everyone who's just so supportive of um, the books that I write and the ministry that I do. It's just awesome to know that the, the people are there. It's wonderful. Oh, and we're hungry for it. So, yes. Well, before we get started and hear all of the exciting information about the new book, um, would you please lead us in prayer? Sure. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, we ask you to bless this time, especially as we talk about Our Lady and her rosary, this powerful weapon in our hands to overcome uh, vice, to overcome the evil one, to give you glory, to crown Our Lady with the spiritual crown of roses, and to help bring about peace in the world. And uh, let us pray together that beautiful prayer that makes up the, the most common prayer of the, ha of the rosary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wonderful. So now everyone's waiting to hear, what is the title of your new book? It's Champions of the Rosary, The History and Heroes of a Spiritual Weapon. Well, it sounds dynamite. So yeah. how long did it take you to write it? And how long is the book? We need some details. Yeah, um, it's taken me about two and a half years to write. And um, the, the cool thing, I, I, I love saying this to people, and um, I haven't said it to many people yet because I haven't really talked about the book yet. Um, every single saint and blessed and venerable and servant of God that's in the book, and there's a ton, um, I've made a novena to over the last two years. So... Um, I've been doing a nonstop novena to all of these figures that are in the book. Um, and to me, that's just been so powerful because I really feel that they're blessing it with their, you know, intercession. Um, and they blessed it with, with their, with content because it's, um, 300, no, I'm sorry. It's 455 pages. That's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of, a lot of space for a book. So now I understand that you have a lot of orphans by how many in You're breaking up a little bit, so I'm not sure I got all that, but I, I think you said how many endorsements from bishops. Oh, are you um, there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Did, did you uh, the question? We're having a little bit of trouble with our... Yeah, I'm not surprised. Every time I talk about the rosary, this happens. So, um, yeah, not this, a shocker at all. This is quite unusual. I, sh I should mention to our viewers that normally we do a whole other uh, video program, uh, video and audio. However, of course, um, as Spiritual Attack would have it, nothing new. Um, we're having some technical difficulties. So, that means we're on the right track. So, we'll get it worked out. 
And um, so anyway, Father, um, who were the endorsements? You, you said um, different bishops. I think a cardinal, some Dominicans. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've been so blessed with endorsements. I, I have actually more than 30 um, bishops who have endorsed it, wow. and um, four cardinals, um, and wow. many Dominican provincials and theologians from around the world, from all over. So I think it, I have about 60 endorsements total. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And, and yeah. as a matter of fact, one of the endorsements is from an archbishop, uh, a Dominican archbishop in the Vatican. He actually said mm-hmm. something about it being quite possibly the most comprehensive book ever written on the rosary. That's pretty huge. Who was that's, that? Yeah, that's really huge. Um, it's Archbishop Augustin de Noya. He's a Dominican. He's the um, assistant secretary at the CDF, the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith in Rome. So he's super intelligent and, um, you know, he's, he's right at the top of, of, you know, the, the leadership there. And when he wrote that statement, after he read the manuscript, I was just like, wow, that's got to go on the back cover for sure. (laughs) (laughs) That's a biggie. Yeah, no, definitely. Well, and then the thing that I really noticed, um, in reading some of the endorsements, and actually, some of them really got me was, um, you know, ones like the, the one, I think it was a bishop from Nigeria that said, um, and, and this seems to be the consensus, the general consensus is, um, this is a book for right now, for us in this present time, and that we all need to be champions of the rosary. But the thing that he said that was extra special was something to the effect of, I will um, rely on this book or I will hold this this book close to me for the rest of my life or something that I just remember thinking, that was so sweet. I mean, it was just, yeah. it was, and there are, and even the bishop from Scotland that was so thrilled that you mentioned a Scottish saint. I mean, you know, it was, right. you could really tell that they had really paid attention and they really were embracing this book and were putting it out there for everyone saying, hey, this is dynamite. You need to get it. You know, so I thought I thought that was there were some fantastic endorsements. So, yeah. Yeah. So, no, thanks. So now you mention um, in the title of the book, uh, spiritual weapon. Did you have a particular weapon in mind um, when you when you named the book? Uh, absolutely. Um, when you do like the research on the history of the rosary, you know, you, you discover that it was really forged in a time of chivalry during the medieval period of church history. And, you know, that was a time of knights and swords and battles and all of that. So that really was the the original intention of what the rosary was made to do. And that was to combat heresy, was to bring people who had fallen away from the truth um, back to the light of Christ in the Catholic Church and her sacraments and her teachings. And so... Um, you know, it's always been talked about in that way, but it's interesting that it was actually forged initially to be a weapon. That was heaven's intention. Oh, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, okay, the, the, they went out for a minute there. Well, and now in light of that, there was a uh, another endorsement that came from a bishop that had some sort of vision involving the rosary. Is that included in the book? Yes, it is. And um, his endorsement's also on the back cover. Um, That's the bishop that you were mentioning that he said he would treasure the book for the rest of his life. Um, Yeah, so he's from Nigeria. And you can watch these things on YouTube. He has videos. In December of 2014, this bishop, Oliver Dome is his name, um, he was in prayer in his chapel praying the rosary. And as he says in these videos, and he gives testimony to it, Jesus appeared to him, and our Lord held out to him, extended to him a sword, a literal sword of steel. And the bishop was taken aback, of course. So the gesture that Jesus was giving him, the sword, was take it. So the bishop reached out his hand to take the sword, and as soon as he touched it, it turned into a rosary. And Jesus said to the bishop, Boko Haram is gone. Boko Haram is gone. Boko Haram is gone. He said it three times to the bishop. And that's very significant because Boko Haram is one of these radical Islamic groups that, you know, decapitates people and kidnaps little girls and does horrible things. And this bishop is in Nigeria, one of those areas that is very much threatened by this group. So 
heaven is trying to tell us today, especially the bishops, to take up this spiritual weapon um, again, because the fact that the rosary has been understood to be a spiritual sword is right from the beginning. Almost every single battle that the rosary has been involved in, um, it's been used as a spiritual weapon to overcome falsehoods. And so we need to do it again. And my book is going to contain pretty much every battle that the rosary has ever been in. And I guarantee most people have never even heard of the majority of them. They've heard of like Lepanto. Everybody knows about Lepanto. But there are so many more that are smaller, uh, of lesser significance on, on the grand scale of things, but still inspiring. And I've got them in the book. Oh, I can't wait. I mean, people are chomping at the bit for this book. I mean, you can see the excitement. I mean, just want, looking on Facebook, I see everyone, I've tried to pre-order, I've, I've put it on my wish list. Everything. There's yeah. this this feeling that you know, we have this yearning that there's more information, we need it, and you're providing it. I'm so thankful that you that you did this book. I can't wait to get my copy. So now tell us, um, who was it for, you know, I guess some people are confused, who was it that founded the Rosary? And um, and, right. and when was it founded? Yeah, my book covers this in great detail because, you know, there's a lot of books written on the Rosary out there today. Many of them are very good, but most of them get the history wrong um, because within the last hundred years, there's, there's been a lot of what's been called modernism in studies done on devotionals and things like this. And they, they begin to classify things as legends or myths. And many books today, that's what they began to say about the rosary, that um, there is no real founder, a particular person, that it developed. And there's truth in that. It has developed, you know, and nobody denies that. But, you know, the popes specifically in encyclicals have said that the founder is St. Dominic. Um, and so that's very specific. And so um, saints have said this, and I've got all these quotes. I've got documents, official documents, high-ranking documents, encyclicals, apostolic letters, um, the letters that the popes have written to the Dominicans saying these kind of things. And from the historical record, the, the most accurate date that can be given is the year 1208, um, when it was founded, when Our Lady gave this method of preaching uh, and praying to him to fight against the Albigensians. Um, so, and we, we can say 1208 because the first battle that the Rosary won was the Battle of Muret in France. Um, that was against the Albigensians. And then it was right after that, that the Dominicans um, were approved as a religious order and were actually celebrating the 800th anniversary of them being founded this year. So um, in 1216, uh, they were founded. So they're celebrating a great anniversary this year. And then it, it went from there. So early 13th century, St. Dominic is the founder. So what happened then? Is it? Tell me, is it in the book where um, the uh, rosary was renewed in the 15th century by Blessed Alan de la Roche? Is that mentioned at all? Oh, for sure. That's that's essential because, um, you know, a lot of people will will say, well, you know, we don't have any early documentation about the rosary. St. Dominic never wrote anything. Well, that that may be true. It may not be true. The fact of the matter is we don't have any single statement written by St. Dominic today, not one on any subject. So are we to assume that he didn't say anything about anything? Of course not. What happened was in the 14th century, the Black Death, the Black Plague hit Europe and it wiped out over one third of the population. Millions of people died. Um, libraries, convents, monasteries had to be burned because they were, they were contaminated with the plague. And so tons of documentary evidence were, were burned. And this, this is a common theme in the history of the rosary that the, the evil one uses both natural disasters and devious methods to destroy anything associated with, with this. And so after the Black Plague, where people were more focused on surviving than really, you know, worrying about writing down histories of devotions, um, they wanted to simply survive this thing. After that passed, in the 15th century, um, rosaries began to spring up all over the place. You, you get St. Bridget of Sweden, uh, a rosary comes to, into existence. The Franciscan rosary comes into existence, the Corona rosary, and God begins to 
appear, Jesus begins to appear to a Dominican priest um, to renew the Dominican rosary, the first rosary, the mother of all of the other forms of the rosary, and that was Blessed Alan de la Roche. And all of that in great detail is going to be in my book. Oh, that's fantastic. I mean, there, there is nothing like this. this. This is so exciting. So now you mentioned the Battle of Lepanto. There are other battles then that were won, um, evil oh, yeah. was conquered, there, there, there were, and those are all mentioned in the book. Oh, they're all in there, and there's, there's oh. some great ones, like right before Lepanto, which was in the 16th century, that was in 1571, but even like in fi the 1530s, there was a, a, a woman who had converted from the Orthodox Church, became a, a, a Third Order Dominican in the city of Kotor, which is in modern-day Montenegro, the Muslims were seeking to invade uh, that land, and she got the people there to pray the rosary, and they um, saved the city by praying the rosary. Now, that story is almost nowhere can you find that in English. I only learned about it from a Croatian Dominican nun who did the research for me and helped me to find out about it and dig deeper, and it's, it's mind-blowing. And then there's also the story um, of this, the great siege of Malta, which happened six years before Lepanto, where the um, Grand Master of the, um, the Knights of Malta, that would be the short name, it's a very long name, the, the Military Order of St. John is called, but um, he actually had a rosary engraved on his sword as he defended Malta against 40,000 Muslims. And they only had, an, the, and the Catholics only had an army of 6,000. Imagine the odds. So right. the Muslims lost 30,000 of their men. Only 10,000 survived. And uh, that sword is still on display, the same one with the rosary engraved on the blade in the city of uh, Burgu in Malta to this day. Goodness gracious. So there seems to be a common thread that when the rosary is prayed against the Muslims, there seems to victory that that seems to be a resounding there was lepanto there was all of the, the malta the uh, this is this is quite interesting especially for our time that this book should come out with all of the horrible things that are going on in the world right now it's quite interesting again yeah. another yeah. another great reason why we all need to have this book because if we follow exactly the, the road map of what the the uh, the saints used before us and had victory. They conquered evil with the weapon, with the rosary. It's not just a nice little thing to do with your family. It truly is the weapon. Mm -hmm. Wow, you're giving us the roadmap there. So thank you, mm -hmm. and, and we can't wait. So um, now St. Louis de Montfort, he did a lot to promote the rosary. Is that is that correct? And can you explain that to us a little bit? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, without a doubt, he, he wrote the greatest book on the rosary, um, you know, my, my book is not the greatest book on the rosary. Mine's the most comprehensive um, because he wrote his three centuries ago. So I've, I've brought it up to date you know, and filled it in you know, since that time. But when he wrote his book in the early 18th century, he provided a whole history of the rosary, um, the miracles associated with it up until his time, and the power of it and how it, it transforms you know, people, and especially priests. He primarily wrote it for priests. Because during his time, it was the priest who, who ridiculed it and thought it was just some silly little devotion for old ladies, you know, and, and little children. But he, had, he intentionally taught the opposite, that this is, if you want to be a holy priest, you got to pray the rosary. If you want to save souls, you got to pray the rosary. But in that, Satan wasn't happy. And so with most of the writings of St. Louis de Montfort, um, they were buried in a field in France for about 150 years or so, um, because, you know, as, as St. Louis de Montfort himself said, Satan was going to go on the hunt for these documents on Our Lady and on the Rosary. And in a certain sense, God allowed that to happen, because he knew it was going to happen, because had those things been found during the French Revolution, I guarantee you they would have been destroyed and we wouldn't have them today. So Satan didn't want anybody to find out about it, God, you know, went into, you know, uh, his method of providential planning and allowed them to be buried so that after the French Revolution, they would be discovered when they would be needed big time. And that would be our times. So God making good out of something bad. That's right. Exactly what he did.
the bear the bearing was bad but yeah yeah good good totally came of it so well well and that's interesting because the way that St. Louis de Montfort had to promote the rosary to the priest, do you think that then, because the book can still be read, that there wouldn't be a waning of devotion to the rosary? And yet there is. So here you come, mm. almost as a new St. Louis de Montfort, to mm. promote the rosary. And um, I, I've got to say, a very sad on a very sad note, uh, my family and I were away on vacation uh, just two weeks ago, and I even brought this up in the show last week. And regretfully, the priest... Um, when we were down south, spent more time at this huge church um, telling us about um, how the Muslims pray on beads very much like the rosary, and they meditate on those beads, on their beliefs or their God. And it's the same God when I thought, why aren't you promoting the rosary? You know, he had such a perfect opportunity there and just kind of kind of went askew. So, um, yeah, yeah, you're doing a great job. We need to be hearing that. So well, now, let, let, me know, let me know who that was, and I'll send one of my books to my brother there. Uh, gladly, I will, after the show, exactly. So now, you mentioned that the miracles had been mentioned in St. Louis de Montfort's book. Now, do you address the miracles in your book? I do. I, I present a ton of miracles. There, obviously, there's going to be many that are going to be very personal to people that I, I can't put in the book. It would be encyclopedic. But I do put the more prominent ones in there, the rosaries that have saved, na the, the rosary prayers that have saved nations from revolutions, like in the Philippines, for example, and Colombia, in Austria, when they were partitioned, and part of it was given to Russia, and they prayed a rosary campaign, and Russia left um, you know, of their own accord and peace. And um, like the story of Ted Bundy, for example, when he went on his last rampage in Tallahassee at the uh, university, how one girl was saved because she fell asleep with a rosary in her arm that night when he went into her room to kill her after he killed two or three other girls. He was um, he felt a force and he dropped his uh, weapon, his uh, like knife and ran out of the room. And later on death row, he testified he didn't know what had happened. But the priest told him that the girl made a promise to her mother to pray the rosary when she was at college every night for protection. Well, it was the rosary that repelled Ten Bundy out of that room and saved that girl's life. And these are all testimonies, testimonies of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, how when, you know, the, the atomic bombs hit, there was a, a monastery of uh, Franciscans founded by Maximilian Kolbe and uh, a Jesuit uh, house in both uh, respective cities that were saved from the atomic bombs because they were both praying the rosary according to the intentions of Our Lady of Fatima. There are so many miracles associated with the rosary. Oh, my goodness. I had no idea. That is uh, really, I, the Ted Bundy thing totally blows me away. That's, yeah. that's incredible. So I love hearing current day stories. And I think a lot of people do because, you know, a lot of times they tend to think, oh, that's a thing of the past. I mean, when yeah. you read the stories and the lives of the saints, you know, even though they really should be guides to help us in our lives, a lot of times people look at it and just think, oh, that was then, but this is now. That right. really brings it to the here and now of how powerful the rosary truly is. So yeah. excellent. So now there have been popes that have promoted the rosary in the past. Um, is there one that you think promoted it the most? Yeah, for sure. I mean, without a doubt, the the great rosary pope would be Leo the Thirteenth. This guy was out of control in love yeah. with the rosary. I mean, he during his pontificate, he wrote eleven encyclicals on the rosary. Wow. Okay, that's that's amazing. I mean. Uh, St. John Paul II, in 2002, he wrote an apostolic letter on the rosary, right? That's where we get the luminous mysteries. Right. That's not even an encyclical. Which, you know, Pope Leo XIII wrote 11 encyclicals on the rosary. He wrote numerous apostolic letters on the rosary. He um, put Our Lady of the Rosary's title in the Litany of Loretto. He um, promoted it everywhere that he went. He's largely responsible for turning the month of October into the month of the rosary, because it used to just be associated with October 7th, the Battle of Lepanto commemoration day. But he grew up in an agricultural environment as a young boy, and he knew that October was the month of harvest. And so he wanted to harvest souls with the rosary, especially during the month of October. And so he was incredible. And, and I, I talk about him big time in the book. Oh, I love that because I love Pope Leo the, Leo the 13th. As a matter of fact, I just signed up for a Facebook page um, for the cause for his sainthood, which I still can't right. believe he's not saint 
Leo the 13th. I'm like, it drives me crazy. Yeah, I don't know. I, I actually had done research about it, and I found out some things, but my memory's so bad I can't even recall, and it's probably just as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Now, um, Pope John Paul II, you mentioned um, the letter that he did in 2002. He, um, yes, he gave us the Luminous Mysteries, but mm -hmm. he also mentioned Blessed Bartol Bartolo Longo. Um, yeah. Do you talk about him at all, and can you tell us about that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's incredible. I When I first, I was almost ready to be ordained a priest. I was ordained in 2003. So when that letter came out, I read it immediately. And I he kept mentioning this blessed Bartolo Longo. And I'm like, who's this guy? I, I had never heard of him. So I did some research. I could not believe what I, what I learned. Blessed Bartolo Longo was a man who grew up in Naples. And when he went off to college to pursue law, he fell away from the church and began to be involved in spiritualism, like attending seances and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And he got so involved in it that in his own words, he was an, he became an ordained satanic priest. Those are his own words, okay? Yeah, that's horrible, right? So, and eventually that, that led to his depression, anxiety, having nightmares and just restless. And then he went and he talked to a Catholic priest eventually and had a huge conversion. And he spent the rest of his life dedicated to spreading the rosary in the old destroyed city of Pompeii, right? We all know the story of Vesuvius, you know, destroyed it, the volcano. So he stayed there and rebuilt the city around this church, which is to this day the world's most significant church dedicated to the rosary. It's the Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Pompeii. St. John Paul II, Pope Benedict XVI, and now even Pope Francis have all visited there. And it is significant. It is huge. It's where we get the 54-day Rosary Novena, the irresistible Novena that many people are, are, are aware of, and it's very powerful. Um, and this, this guy was a former satanic priest, and he's now a blessed and probably will be a saint one day. What in the world? Now, you're going to be leading a pilgrimage. Are you going to be going to that site? You bet I am. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Blessed Bartolo. <laughs> So now, as far as uh, the approved Marian apparitions, um, Our Lady always seemed to to prominently, you know, mention the rosary. Um, are those in the book? Uh, and can you tell yeah. us about some of those? Yeah, I've got them all in the book. Um, so yeah, I mean, she she kind of builds up to 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 what we have today happening. So for example, um, at La Salette, you know, an approved apparition, she asked the children to pray the Our Father and the Hail Mary, and then after that. Um, when she comes to Lourdes, obviously, she prays the rosary, not all of it, because she's not going to glorify herself by saying the Hail Mary or parts of the Our Father, where it asks for forgiveness, you know, but she prays the glory be, and she, she, her little fingers glide over the beads as St. Bernadette is praying them, and that's just wonderful, you know. Then after that, of course, we have Our Lady of Fatima, where on the last apparition of October 13th, 1917, she calls herself Our Lady of the Rosary. I am the Lady of the Rosary. After that, we have the approved apparitions in uh, Belgium of Our Lady of Bano and Our, and Our Lady of Burang, where she comes with a rosary in both of those apparitions draped over her arm. And then after that, we, we have the um, revelations given to St. Faustina, about the Divine Mercy Chaplet, which is basically a new form of devotion to God's mercy superimposed on the already existing rosary. You don't need a new set of beads. It's the, just the normal rosary. Then after that, you have Our Lady of Akita in Japan, which is fully approved, and the rosary is a huge theme in, in that apparition. You have Our Lady of Kebeho in the 1980s, where Our Lady taught the, the standard rosary, but also the rosary of the Seven Sorrows, which is a very ancient rosary, also dating from the 13th century, the century of St. Dominic. Um, and then you have um, Cuapa, Nicaragua, which is a most fascinating apparition where heaven almost does a sh uh, uh, like a film uh, displaying the history of the rosary. It's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Then we have just recently, just literally a week and a half ago, I think it was, um, in Argentina, there's a woman who's been having apparitions for a very long time. They've been just approved by the local bishop, and the main theme of the apparitions is the rosary. Our Lady refers to herself as Our, Our Lady of the Rosary of San Nicolas. Uh, that's the name of the town there, San Nicolas, in Argentina. Now fully approved. So 
Jesus has appeared to this bishop in 2014 in Nigeria, gave him the sword that turned into a rosary. Heaven is trying to tell us something. Loud and clear. Yeah. So, so Argentina. Does the Holy Father Pope Francis pray the rosary? Oh yes, he does. Uh, it's amazing because um, oh, when he was when he was a bishop, he made an apostolic visit to see the Pope, and at that time that was Saint John Paul II, and he saw the Pope praying his rosary on his knees in such intense prayer, and. Um, at that time, uh, Bishop Bergoglio, he said to himself, I've got to really step up my devotion to Our Lady, especially through the rosary. So after that visit, he began to pray the rosary every day. And now, as the Pope, his secretary has said that he prays every day three rosaries, sometimes the whole thing, all four mysteries. I mean, as if he doesn't have anything to do, you know what I mean? So that's inspiring. <laughs> It totally is inspiring. So now tell us, I mean, who are you hoping is going to, who are, who should be purchasing this book? I mean, in my opinion, it should be everyone, but who do yeah. you think should be purchasing this book? Um, definitely, I mean, Catholics. I mean, and I, I'll just follow St. Louis de Montfort's lead here. I, I want it in the hands maybe first of the clergy mm -hmm. um, because they can preach about it. They can talk about it. They can get the rosary going in their parishes before or after Mass or on Saturdays, whatever, you know, get 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 it people mobilized. I mean, look at the great examples like um, pa Father Patrick Payton, who got yes. millions of people to pray the rosary, you know, around the world. I mean, the, and he the prays together stays together, right? Exactly. And, and the reason I say priest is because it's important to remember that when heaven gave the rosary to the world, it was given first to a priest, St. Dominic. And so priests have the power to influence people you know, quickly and effectively because people listen. So priests, but then also, um, you know, and with priests, I mean bishops as well because they're priests. But then the Catholic laity also, um, because they need reinforcements. They need to, 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 you know, to have our support and to have this devotion um, out there on the battlefield because the family is being attacked today, right? I mean, we all know this. Everything is being flipped upside down today. Marriage is being redefined, and this is going out the window, and that's up for grabs. You know, we get this bathroom issue today, all this nonsense. We need to pray the Luminous Mysteries, which talks about marriage. Obviously, at the wedding feast of Cana, it was one man and one woman. This is why we have the mist Luminous Mysteries, because we're in an age of darkness. So the whole world needs to get this book, but we need to start with the Catholics and then give it to everybody else. <laughs> Yeah, I totally agree. And for anybody that's a history buff, would really enjoy it, just even that aspect of, of showing exactly what's happened in the past. Because I know for myself, you know, I know about, I think, most of the apparitions, but I'd like to have it in one nice little condensed place where I can open it up and show it to someone or even with teaching my children. Yeah. You know, I think yeah. it's it's going to be a handy encyclopedia type of thing. So that's that's wonderful. So now going back to the cover of the book, um, if the producer can pull that up, can you explain to us um, the cover and the shield and, and all that's going on there? Can you guide us there? Right. So I, I love like medieval chivalry knights kind of stuff I always have. And so when I, I knew the book was going to be about the, the rosary as a spiritual weapon and a sword in particular, I was looking for these kind of medieval crests, and I found one, uh, this Father um, Richard uh, Hellman, he started this Holy League organization, he's a great priest, and he had this shield, but it didn't have the swords or the crown on top or the rosary, and I, I asked him, I said, Father, would you allow me to adapt it for my book, would that be okay? And so he said, sure, that's no problem, he's such a good guy, and so um, I got uh, Doug Barry. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Yes, and I'm familiar with Father's Crest, too. I thought he copied it from you, but okay, no, go ahead. No, I got it from him. <laughs> he deserves credit for, for the original design there. I, I modified it for, for okay. mine, but put the swords on it and everything. But um, Doug Barry, one of his sons, Jordan Barry, is a, like a graphic designer. So I, I asked him to design it for me, and he did. And so that's that's the 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 how we, we came to the look. And we're gonna have that we're gonna we're gonna make shirts with that on it. We're gonna get it out there in prayer cards and everything and it really pops and it really it really kind of you know draws you in. 
Well, I totally love it because I'm all about crests. I mean, you know, my my whole product line, it, it the whole idea was to have the shield, you know, because yeah. we're supposed to be being willing to do battle for the faith, yeah. you know, and right. um, and have you know, uh, different elements of Our Lady. And and what I loved about yours was whether I I would imagine that it was intentional, but, you know, you have the shield, you almost have one shield on top of the other, but Uh it's the Blessed Mother, which really is the breastplate in front of the cross. So it's almost indicative of to Jesus through Mary, like the St. Louis de Montfort consecration, you know, and I have that same type of, of theme, you know, going. So I I totally appreciated it. The crown, every little thing. I I totally loved it. So yeah, yeah, good, good job on that. Thanks. So um, now in the book, you mentioned 26 champions of the rosary. Who are some of them? Yeah. So what I do is starting with St. Dominic, I bring it, uh, uh, all the major players in the rosary um, from the 13th century up to the present time. Now, there have been tons. Uh, there's no way I could put them all in there. But I chose 26 because these are the ones that actually left us tidbits, little gems of their um, writings or sayings about the rosary. And I did that so p- the readers would be edified by what they read. So there, there, there's tons of saints, blesseds, popes. Um, so some of my, my, my bigger ones, you know, would be, um, like St. Louis de Montfort, obviously, but there's also St. Um, Anthony Mary Claret. Not a lot of people know about him, but this guy was phenomenal. He became uh, a bishop in Cuba and he mandated that in every parish in his diocese that the priest had to pray the rosary with the people. And he would sneak into the back of churches just to make sure it was being done. And sometimes he would find his priests weren't doing it. So he would walk right up to the front and lead the people himself in the rosary in these parishes. So this guy, Our Lady appeared to him on several occasions. This is in his autobiography. And Our Lady said to him, you are to be the new Saint Dominic for your times. That's a huge statement, you know, and and, and he was, and he was. And then I've got, um, like I, we already mentioned, uh, Patrick Payton, the servant of God, Patrick Payton. This guy was amazing. Nobody has gathered more people together uh, to pray the rosary than Patrick Payton. This guy is amazing. And then I've got Frank Duff, uh, the servant of God, Frank Duff, the founder of the Legion of Mary. The Legion of Mary is the world's largest Marian organization that ever was. It's huge. At one point in the mid 20th century, almost every Catholic parish in the world had a Legion of Mary group. This guy was 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 amazing. Um, and then I've got uh, obviously like Saint Maximian Kolbe. I've got Pope Leo the Thirteenth, um, Saint John Paul II, of course. Um, soon to be Saint Teresa of Calcutta. She almost always had a rosary in her hand. You know when 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 she was speaking and 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 praying with her sisters. So twenty six of them, and I actually commissioned artwork on them. And I had two ladies paint different images, though similar, that I can't reveal to the public yet, but you are going to be blown away when you see this. Our Lady's holding a sword, slaying a dragon, and the 26 champions are gathered around her, and it's just awesome. Oh, that sounds fabulous. Well, now, remind me, um, Father Peyton, was it something like, was it 300,000 or 700,000? It was some huge number of people that he got gathered. Do you recall? Oh, by any chance get, for the- he would get millions. Oh, yeah. Millions? In, yeah. In San Francisco, he got, I can't remember the exact figure right now, but it was something like 700,000 in San Francisco. That's and to this I day, the, yeah. that archdiocese says that was the most significant large event that they've ever had. Um but he, like in the Philippines and in Colombia and Brazil, he would literally get two to three million, sometimes even more, in one event to pray the rosary in the streets. Wow. And that, and and nowadays, I mean, you're hard pressed to find, I, I quite often um, with the TFP lead rosary rallies, and you're hard yeah. pressed to get enough people to fill the sidewalk. Yeah. So I think, I think that might be something we might have to work on together is... Yeah. Let's do another Father Peyton event and let's get people motivated with the release of this book to get out there and and pound the pavement and let's get out in great number and pray the rosary. That would be phenomenal. The the power that that will have. We know the power that it has. We've seen it happen. So so now where can people 
um, get the book? How can they purchase it? And when exactly will it be released? Yeah, it's going to be officially released on the Feast of St. Dominic. Um, that's August 8th. Um, people will be able to take pre-orders on my website probably in mid-July. Um, so Father Calloway is com is my website. Unfortunately, we tried to pre-release it for pre-orders on Amazon, but here's the thing. Um, somebody hacked into my Amazon page and messed it all up. They said it was out of print. They changed the date. They changed my name. Um, and that still is not resolved. So the evil one is not happy with this book at all. Um, I could tell you and that story. tells us it's dynamite. That that's <laughs> that was that was probably your best endorsement of all. <laughs> that shows that he's a nervous wreck and he will be trying to bury it in the field. That's what he's doing again, but it'll come right. out fantastic in the end. So right. good. Okay. All right. <laughs> I've actually I was so worried sometimes on my travels that uh, if, if the plane went down, I would the book would be lost, you know. So I would actually save it on various USB drives and put them in my room or give it to one of somebody else to hold just in case I was taken out, that the book would survive. <laughs> That's right. Well, between the bearing of the other, and then, and then when you think of the divine mercy image, how that was, you know, hidden away for so long or whatever, I can understand that thinking. That makes total sense to me, yeah. yeah. So, well, thankfully, it's... It's in print. It's just a matter of the release date. So yeah. um, we're definitely going to be looking forward to that. So now, is there anything else that you would like to tell us about the book? Um, I would just say um, it's it's a lengthy book. So it's it, it'll take a little bit of time to read, but it's definitely not a boring book. Um, and I really want to encourage, because I, I fall into this sometimes too. I'm like reading like 10 books at the same time, and then I don't really retain what was in what book and who said what? And I get confused and or I start reading a book and I don't finish it because then I see another book in a catalog. I'm like, ooh, I want to read that one. I would encourage people when you open this book, stick with it and read the whole thing, because at the end of the book, I'm pretty sure that you're going to want to be a champion of the rosary, that you're going to be convicted that heaven is is asking you to take up this weapon for our times and to use it. So stick with the book and, and see it through. Oh, and it's definitely a timely book. I mean, it. it I personally think every Catholic every school should have this. Every school program should have this because, again, it, it's a. It, it's not. Um, it's not made up stories. It's all real. It's truly right. historical and it's spiritual. So it it would count as religion and history all in one book. Look at that. Yeah. That that would be a fantastic curriculum. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> That's my endorsement. Okay, just in case you needed it, you know. So um, so anyway, all right. Well, we're gonna take a quick commercial break, and when we come back. Um, for anyone who would like to either chat in the chat room or call into Abishan Tunnel, he is, and, and any other comments you'd like, um, that number is 440-536-3699. Again, 440-536-3699. We'll be back in a moment. Faith Life Family Wear is a faith-based crusted clothing. work and play. Shop now to look great, evangelize, and support Fiat Ministry Network. Share the good news about our website with your friends to encourage everyone to take a stand with style. Stay connected with Fiat Ministry Network. Like us on Facebook. Stay updated at Fiat Ministry Network. Dot TV slash feed. Follow us on Twitter at Fiat Ministry Net. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Fiat Ministry Network. Fiat Ministry Network, encouraging all to say yes to Jesus Christ. You, you can't see it. Uh, oh, well, back. And welcome back. As a matter of fact, we we were just marveling. People in the chat room apparently are saying that they're seeing a heavenly glow behind Father. Yes. Um, it's his, his halo. You know, Our Lady, you know, someone, some some heavenly being is is there with him. Um, again, let me give you the number because I know some people are trying to call in and um, we lost the connection. It's 440-536-3699. And I'm going to bring Kent 
Kowalski, yep. our yep. producer, on to. Um, you might not be able to see him, but we'll be able yep. to hear him. Yep. Um, is there anything else in the chat room, or is anybody calling in yet, Ken? No, just everybody's really excited about uh, getting the uh, book and just w waiting and really enjoying yeah. the uh, conversation. Yeah, we did have a c call earlier. Uh, if they want to call in right now, go ahead. Um, anyone is, you know, welcome to call. Um, so. Yeah, August can't get here fast enough. It's such a long wait. I understand the Feast of St. <laughs> Dominic. I yeah. get it. It's dynamite, but it's a long ways away. Thankfully, I it's know. before the election. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Oh, we have a call. We have a call. Uh, Norman okay. it's going to be calling. Hello, Norman. Hello? Hey. Hello, are you there? Hello, Norman. I'm calling in. Uh, we can't hear. Norman, are you there? Can you hear him? Yeah, nope. Aloha Can't hear from Hawaii. Now we know Norman. He he actually uh, is in Aloha Hawaii. From Hawaii. Oh, uh, okay. Some of your surfing territory. Okay. Oh yeah, Norman, I'm here. Can you hear us? You can you can't hear him? Nope. No. Oh, okay. Normally when Norman calls in we get a big Aloha. That's okay. That's That's so yeah, exciting. we got yeah, it. Yeah, from I Hawaii. can hear him, but you know. I guess we didn't nice. get the Um okay, Norman well. call call right back. I'll get you on a different way. Call right back. Okay. 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 I'm not quite sure what island he's on, but okay. um, but Let's yeah, no, he's he's can. he's always exciting to hear from. And as a matter of fact, he usually has roosters or something in the background. It always makes for interesting conversation. It's like you have a farm or something there, Norman, in Hawaii, yeah. really? You know? <laughs> okay. Let's see. Oh, we'll yeah, try again. So we'll try again. Hello, Norman. Hi. Oh, resume call. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I lost everybody else. Oh, boy. I'm going to have to hang up. That's not going to work. Uh, resume call. Oop, we're back. Oh, we're back. Yeah. Okay. All right, that's not going to work. We're back, but I can't see us on the screen. I see uh, blank. Oh, I thought I was boy. getting hacked again. Yeah, I know. Hey, you know, yeah. it's, it's par for the course. It's the spiritual battle, and uh, oh, we're slowly coming back on the screen. Good. Yeah. Thank you, Blessed Mother. Okay. All right. Yeah. We, okay. So um, that's we've not, got dark yeah, in the middle. Usually it works, but tonight uh, it's not working. That's just yeah. me. Get me off the screen. I'm not a poor. Everybody wants to see Father Callaway. Get yeah. him on. Yeah. Okay. I'm there. Gonna try okay. To... Good. All right. So Father, uh, while we're waiting for a call or or whatever, um, yeah, we're gonna have to start pushing to have everybody come out in large numbers. Maybe we have to do it a couple of times and. Yeah. And, and maybe in several main cities, maybe you can take one city, I can take the other, and uh, and let, let's get people out in great numbers yeah. to start praying. I mean, we need yeah, to do they, that. Yeah, and some cities do. I mean, they have um, different, like, uh, rosary bowl type events, you know, um, where they come together. Um, and even, like, what's inspiring to me is, for example, where I live in Steubenville, Ohio, um, of course, it has the very famous and wonderful Franciscan University there. But in my neighborhood where I live, which is about a mile off of campus, the neighbors in the warmer months, um, they gather every Friday evening in front of our house because we have the Blessed Sacrament, of course. And they process around the neighborhood as families. And sometimes you'll have a lot of people out there with pushing strollers with babies in it. And they pray the rosary through the streets. And then they, when they're finished with the rosary, they pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet. And they end up back in front of our house to open it up for petitions for this mother is pregnant and needs our prayers or this situation. It's it's wonderful. It's really amazing. What a beautiful thing. And it actually is reminiscent of what I had done, which I thought I was the only one doing it. I even mm. um, gave a videotape of it to Father Frank Pavone many years ago. It was probably about 20 years ago. Um, mm. And that was doing something very similar called the Jericho March for Life, that instead uh. of just standing at an abortion mill, we would process from the church after Mass um, right. at early, early morning, praying the yeah. Divine Mercy Chaplet. And then yeah. we would encircle the abortion yeah. mill, praying the rosary. We'd right. even have chauffeurs and everything. And it was moms with strollers. And, yeah. and it was it was yeah. peaceful. And we did yeah. it for seven days in a row. And the final day was, you know, yeah. it, it was like all, you know, what broke loose because then you what? had all the opposition and, oh, you yeah. know, but it was powerful. Well, yeah. I'll tell you a powerful story. Also, um, there's a whole bunch of students at Franciscan University that, um, you know, that's such a pro-life school and they, they go to different abortion mills and pray the rosary. But there there's a group that um, 
I know every weekend, some may do it during the week, but on the weekends, definitely, they go and they pray the rosary in front of the strip clubs that are, yeah. you know, right across the river, like in Weirton, West Virginia, because there's so many of them. And that's tough because, you know, a lot of the guys that are going into those places, they're intoxicated. Well, and so they've had beers thrown at them, oh. but they've had incredible stories of guys who, you know, were just having a bad day and wanted to go to one of these right. places. And then they that. see these young men okay. praying the rosary on the sidewalk outside of a, a strip club and they break down and they say, what am I doing? I shouldn't be, I'm married. I shouldn't be going here. You guys just, wow, you guys are awesome. These stories are just amazing, you know? And that, and that is one, that's another thing that I really think we need to, to get busy on. And that is the addiction to pornography. Oh, I mean, it is just so, so prevalent. It, it's just destroying families, even the most solidly Catholic families you're seeing it affect. And it's, yeah. it's something that needs to be addressed. It really does. Absolutely. And I, I, I believe that the rosary offers an antidote for addictions of all kinds, but especially for pornography. Um, because, you know, the rosary, a, a rosary well prayed takes about 20 minutes to pray for an individual. And, um, you know, temptations that are strong against the flesh, they don't last forever. In their intensity, they would last around 20 minutes or so. And the rosary really has an antidote. It's, 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 a, it's a lifeline that heaven has thrown to us to get the poison out. And so I think that, you know, if you look at, um, like, in my opinion, one of the best, and it's not a rehab. I don't even want to call it a rehab because it's not a rehab. There are these Chinacolo groups founded by the Sister Elvira in Italy, okay, mm -hmm. that help people with all kinds of addictions, drug addictions, alcohol addictions, pornography addictions, all these kind of issues. They don't allow any medication. But do you know what is required every day? Manual labor, and they pray the entire rosary every day. Do you know what the success rate of the people who come out of those? It's in the 90% range. It's unbelievable. I mean, you don't have that kind of numbers in regular rehabilitation centers. Oh, absolutely centers. not. Because no. they, they offer a band aid to a spiritual problem. But right. if you get to the root of it and ground yourself in the sacred mysteries of Christ, which the rosary encapsulates, you'll find freedom. And that's what the rosary does. Yes. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. Now, uh, Kent, did I hear you say that there that the call came yeah, through? Yeah, I, I don't know if you can hear. Uh, we're... We'll try it one more time. Norman, are you there? Can you hear me now? Yeah, no. 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 Okay. Well, we, no, you can't I say we didn't try. Ear That's right. I can right. hear so. them. <laughs> you can hear All them. Right. Okay, you can hear them. Okay, you can hear them. How about now? Through my, not nope. through my phone, but can't hear through, my ear, uh, through my computer. Father Calloway yeah. says hi, Norman. Okay. That's right. All right. Hello, we're going to we're have to fix this next week. That's right. That's right. Okay. That's all right. Thanks, it's Norman. par for the course. It's spiritual no problem, attack. It means Pardon that this yep. book is going to get in the hands of every single Catholic, and we are going to be united in the spiritual weapon. Our Lady, please intercede mm -hmm. for us. So anyway, um, we're going to go ahead, and um, I think we're going to call it a night. We're nearing one hour. So, Father, if you would be so kind as to give us all a blessing, I would greatly appreciate it. Absolutely. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless all of the viewers, all the listeners, all their families, their intentions, especially for loved ones who are away from the faith, that they would come back, that great conversions would happen during this Jubilee year of mercy, and also through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary. We ask this blessing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that. And everyone, if you have not already visited Father's website, it is, again, fathercalloway.com. Please also visit the Fiat Ministry Network.tv site, and we will be having Father's book for sale on there as well through Amazon. And lastly, make sure that you visit faithlifefamilywear.com as when you make your purchase. At the end of the sale, you'll see that you get to choose where your charitable donation can go. And I beg you to please choose the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception because they have nearly, I think it's going to be 35 um, new seminarians, and they have no place to put them. They need our money. They need support, as does Fiat Ministry. So please shop Faith Life Family Wear and give to their organization. Thank you so much for joining us again. Please remember to always take a stand with style. God bless you and good night.